Hi there folks, Andrew here at ChatFuel. Today I'm gonna to be discussing three ways that you can use user attributes in ChatFuel for your e-commerce business. So let's dive right into things. First, we're gonna start here on the welcome message and I'll show you how you can use attributes to segment what your customers or potential customers are most interested in. So we'll start by asking the user a question, which is, what product are you most interested in, let's say? And we can use quick replies here. We could also use buttons, but I'll use quick replies because they're more convenient in this example. So we'll use quick replies here and then attach an attribute to the user based on what product they're most interested in. So we can say something like shirts or pants, right? Let's pretend we're running a clothing business that does e-commerce. So there we go, we have these two options. With quick replies, you can add up to 11 options, but for simplicity, we'll just stick to two here. And then where the attributes come into play is by clicking this option right here, and then creating a category name for these attributes. So in this case, we'll call it something like clothing product, let's say. This is completely arbitrary. You can call it whatever you wish, something that's memorable and easy to keep track of. Great, so the way that this works now is the user's gonna go through and based on their preference, we're going to save and track that data. So obviously in the future, we can retarget these users either through the re-engage tab over here, which allows us to send specific users in a specific segment a message to retarget them and follow up, or alternatively, we could retarget them with messenger ads using Facebook Ads Manager. And to do that, you would go into the People tab and export a custom audience for that. So that's the first component of how you can use attributes in ChatFuel for e-commerce. Next, let's move on to an actual product. So in this step, we're gonna talk about button actions and how you can track what a user does, specifically when they're visiting a website, to determine who are your most engaged users in the bot. So to do that, we have a product right here already created in the format of a gallery card. And we're gonna add a button here that will allow a user to go to, let's say, a Shopify website where they can actually go through the process of purchasing it. So I'm going to add a button here. We'll call it order now, let's say. We'll redirect them to a website. I'll just call it, you know, shopify.com slash shirt, let's say. And then this is a pro only feature. So if you don't have access, that explains why. But this add action step is where the attribute comes into play. So I'm gonna click add action here and set user attribute. Once I click that, it's going to allow me to type in an attribute of my choice. I can either use an existing one or create a new one. So I'll create a new one here and I'll call it something like visited website and I'll set the value to true. This value, again, both of these values can be whatever you want. Uh, it's completely arbitrary. So I could call it true, yes, anything of that sort, whatever helps you keep track of what that positive action of going to the website is. So great, now we've used attributes for tracking what a user does in regards to taking an action on a website. And obviously we can use that for retargeting as well, or just determining, hey, who in our bot is most qualified, who's most engaged, who is a really warm lead that I can attempt to convert. So that's another way to use attributes for an e-commerce use case that's really valuable. And then finally, we'll talk about using attributes to capture email and phone number information. So in this case, let's pretend that to provide somebody with a discount code to our store, first we wanna get their email, so it's kind of a quid pro quo exchange, right? They're giving us something and we're giving them something back that makes it a mutually beneficial interaction. So to set this up, I can click the plus button here for more plugins. I can either use the save user phone or email plugins. I'll choose email in this case, and then I'll save whatever the user responds with which would be their email address, to an attribute, and I'll call this email, email address. It can be any number of names, just like the other two that I mentioned before. Great, so we have this all set up, and then finally, to bring this full circle, obviously we just need to provide the user a discount code, as promised. So we'll say, hey, here's your discount code, and we can call it, you know, 25 off, let's say. Great, and then if we wanted to, we could go the extra step, of course, of adding a button here that applies that to their cart, for example, to make it more actionable. But 
those are three ways that you can use attributes in your chat fuel bot for your e-commerce store again as a quick recap the first one involves using quick replies to segment your users the second is using button actions to determine what users are most qualified and then finally capturing the user's email or their phone number or any other piece of information and then in exchange for that offering a discount code to make it a mutually beneficial interaction. So if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below and also most importantly let me know if you've used any of these strategies before or what other recommendations you have for using attributes as far as an e-commerce business is concerned. That's it for me. Thanks for watching and happy botting.